Alright guys, welcome back to another uh, fan fiction idea, and this one is kind of a loose adaptation of a of a comic book story, but more like this one this story was more inspired because it's more orig it's a little more original, but it, it does have some inspiration from a really terrible comic. And yes, Randy Cunningham, the clone saga. So yes, this is kind of inspired by that god-awful comic series that nearly destroyed not only the Spider-Man uh, brand, but also nearly destroyed Marvel in the process. So yeah, this was kind of this is a kind of an idea that was like because in theory clones were like clo the clone concept is a really cool idea in theory. It's just that no one's really pulled it off. The closest was Bendis in, in Ultimate Spider-Man. So yeah. Um, cl so yeah, clones, whenever br someone brings up clones, uh, it's usually it sets a bad taste in our mouth. But I was thinking to myself, well, what if we just simplified what the clone saga was instead of overcomplicate it? And that was where I kind of got the idea to do, you know, for this storyline, um, for Ra this uh, Randy Cunningham storyline, which I was actually wanted, it, um, through the idea and had uh, my friend Alex Anayas who wanted to incorporate it into his Randy Cunningham, the, you know, the uh, Ultimate Ninja storyline, which was like a series where Randy is now set in his junior year, and he's starting a relationship with Teresa, and not only is he fighting McFist, he's fighting a new slew of villains, and I created this storyline as kind of like, what if we could do the Clone Saga, but better? But then again, that you know... Kind of, you know, it's easier said than done, but I was kind of thinking, let's just simplify the Clone Saga. I mean, Danny Phantom technically did the Clone Saga in 30 minutes and did it a hell of a lot better. Yeah, that whole episode, that whole storyline in, um, where that introduced Danny, his clone, Danny, um, was, is she's technically, I consider her more like she's Ben Riley. She's pretty much Ben Riley. Anyway, so I've talked about this enough. Let's go into the actual story. So the story is, is that um, McFist is looking for a new way to destroy the ninja. And, however, he's kind of sick of using robots, and he's really sick of, of, you know, he's just really sick of Viceroy's robots, because the ninja finds a way, so he's like, maybe I'll just hire somebody. So he puts the call out for, like, hey, can anyone go out and kill the ninja? To which, um... <laughs> to which someone replies, a, a, a assassin by the name of Kingsnake. And Kingsnake is this, is this masked villain who has very has, a clo has clothing and an attire similar to the ninja but more serpent themed. And he's like, look, I can, you know, you're gonna pay me double up front and I can guarantee in 48 hours I can kill the ninja. So McFist is like, sure, four, you got 48 hours here, you know, I'm gonna pay you a double right here clock's ticking, go get him. So, Kingsnake is already on the move, um, and he's already, like, he are, the thing is that he knows who Randy is. He knows who Randy, he knows he's the ninja, and, like, he, t like, he, uh, has, like, this psychological warfare where he's essentially, you know, sneaking into his house and, you know, Stealing things, stealing you know tools from the ninja uh, from the ninja Namacon. He can actually access the the Namacon. Um, he's actually you know following around at school, leaving him these messages, just psyching him out. So when he actually fights him, he's you know Randy so mentally exhausted. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, that came out of nowhere, didn't it? But anyway, like I was saying. <coughs> Excuse me. But like I was saying, he just mentally psychs out Randy so much until the two fight, and he's actually like, oh shit, this guy, this King Snake guy's really damn good. What am I supposed to do? And that's during the fight, uh, King Snake, uh, King Snake is just really has it out for Randy. He's like, you stole, thi you know, you stole my life from me. You, you know, you're masquerade. You that mask doesn't even belong to you. And Randy's like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? I don't know what you're talking, you know, who are you? And that's when King Snake rips his mask off, and it's Randy right under the mask. And Randy's like, what the juice? So, King Snake is, uh, claims to be the real Randy Cunningham, and Randy, we know, is a clone. So, as it turns out, 
um, Randy and Kingsnake, who also claims to be the other Randy, is a, um, this new Randy, the, the quote-unquote real Randy tells him, I was kid during my, um, my, the end of my freshman year, I was kidnapped by this guy who calls himself the Splicer. And the Splicer is this underground scientist who loves to genetic, who has an obsession with genetically altering people with animal DNA because he believes mankind needs to be forcibly evolved. Um, he believes mankind needs a evolutionary um, help because we've uh, we've come you know we've come so far technologically evolutionary we've stunted so I'm going to alter DNA of certain people with different animals to jumpstart a new form of evolution. He's kind of like a mix of Doctor Animo from Ben 10 and uh, the Jackal from of course Spider Man. So what happens is that the Splicer. Uh, kidnap uh, has uh, claim you know this Randy claims that um, the splicer kidnapped him because he he believed the ninja was the pit was a pinnacle of um, evolutionary uh, hu of humans of the humans evolution mankind's evolution excuse me he kidnaps him alters his DNA with that of a of a serpent and uh, keeps him for study however in order to keep everyone quiet. You know, in order to make sure no one finds out that the ninja's missing or whatever, he created a human clone and sent it out to the world to be like his minion, uh, his unknowing minion, and still keep people off tabs that, yeah, I have the real Randy Cunningham. And, oh yeah, I know he's the ninja too, so. Yeah, I took off the mask and we are like, oh yeah, shit. So the splicer, um, is the spl is so yeah, Randy encounters a new villain called the splicer, who is pretty much, like I said, the Jackal mixed with a little bit of Dr. Animo in there, but he's more the Jackal. So, Randy is left with this moral quandary. He's like, what the fuck? Uh, meanwhile, during his whole reign of psychological terror, Kingsnake, the other Randy, um, was also, like, getting very close to Heidi. Um, he was, like, leaving her letters. He was doing all this and that. And Heidi was like, what the hell? And Kingsnake at one point is like, you gotta remember me. I came back for you. So, as it turns out, the other thing is that um, Kingsnake believes that before he was kidnapped, um, Ran him, and, him and Heidi had a relationship, had this secret relationship going on that, um, that were, they were keeping from Howard but wanted to tell him. Keep in mind that Randy, this, Randy right now is having a relationship with Teresa. So, yeah, he's like, you, you know, Teresa's fine and all, but we were, you know, I was supposed to be with, you know, I was with Heidi. That's why you were the clone, you know, the clone wouldn't just ditch the woman I love. So, yeah, I would never do that. And, yeah, Randy's left with this moral quandary. He's like, what if I'm really the clone and this guy, it, this poor shoob, is really the ninja? You know, what if this guy's the, uh, the poor shoob? Eventually, the two kind of come in, you know, come to an understanding and yes, the Ra yes, Ra King Snake is not the real Randy. He is the clone. So yeah, they kind of come to an understanding. And you're also wondering, well, you said he had he was altered with a snake. So what else does he have? You know, what other abilities does he have? He has heightened senses. He's got heat. Vi he's got a heat vision. Um, not heat vision. Excuse me, thermal vision. Excuse me. He has thermal vision like a serpent. He's also capable of. Um, of uh, his claw, his fingernails are actually laced with poison, uh, with neural to with a neural toxin that he can use, and he's also capable of climbing up walls. Um, he's capable of climbing up walls. He also has a, a sort of healing factor. Um, so when he gets any wounds, his uh, skin sheds and reveals like all the injuries are gone. So there you go. He also has incredible. He also has enhanced strength, speed, and agility. So that, and also, like I said, since he's Randy's clone, he knows how to use uh, wep ninjutsu based weapons. So he's a real. Uh, he really takes it to Randy in their first fight. So Randy and, and the clone tr come to an understanding, and the two kind of form this bond. In fact, Randy gives him the na his middle name who in this story would be Rand uh, Rand uh, Randall Benjamin Cunningham. So this new guy, the clone goes by Ben Cunningham, as a reference to, of course, Ben Riley. So, yeah, uh, Randy and Ben team up, take on the Splicer, 
who is more, who is so like, oh, you didn't realize that you were the clone this whole time. It's like, why did you even program memories in there? You know, why did you program memories in my brain, all these false memories, if you just wanted to keep me as a weapon? And he's like, oh, well, because I wanted to. That's all, he's crazy, and yeah. The Splicer's god of his goddamn mind, so the whole reason is like, yeah, I just wanted to see what you could do, what we, what you would do if I gave you those memories and made you think that you were the real Randy Cunningham who had his life stolen by a clone. The data was very in, in, insightful. So, the Splicer gets away, and, but not before Randy, uh, um, Ben sacrifices himself to protect Randy, but during all this, but that would be a little later on in the story. There would be some times where Randy and Ben are, like, connecting, because Randy's like, oh my god, he's technically, like, my brother. Oh my god, I have a sibling, this is amazing! And, of course, you got your cake, and you, you get to have your cake and eat it, too, with Randy, with not only Teresa, but also with the clone, he's with Heidi, who, him and Heidi are having this kind of relationship, um, where she's like, I don't, I never had a relationship with Randy, kind of, you know, with with, you know, Howard's friend, he's like, you gotta remember me. Though every time you misspoke my name was just your brain saying we couldn't be together. So, yeah, that was kind of the thing, is that, yeah, the clone gets with Heidi. Um, so there you go. <laughs> and yes, I did, like, I wanted to do other stuff with the stories, like, where Ben puts on the mask, um, and uses his snake-like abilities mixed with the, with the, uh, powers of the mask as well. There was so much I wanted to do in here, and I just wanted to keep it simple. I didn't want, like, three other clones and, like, Ben taking on, you know, Ben being like, that whole thing of, like, Randy's like, oh, maybe I'm the clone, like, for five, uh, for ten, uh, for almost, like, three fucking years. And, yeah. Because in theory, like I said, in theory, the clone saga could have worked, but you can thank, uh, writers and Marvel Studios, uh, Mar excuse me, not Marvel Comics, excuse me, Marvel Comics, really driving that into the ground. So whenever someone brings up clones, you gotta take it with a grain of salt. And I'm pretty sure some of you guys are like, I don't know. But anyway, so you guys tell me in the comments below, what do you guys think of Randy Cunningham, The Clone Saga? Do you guys, do you guys like it? Do you guys hate it? Um, and what would you, what would you do in this story? Uh, what kind, how would you play out this story with clones? Anyway, so once again, uh, hope you all enjoyed this, this fanfiction idea, and I will see you guys later.